What's up, everybody, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 3 of Falcons in Focus. Woo. I'm Scott Baird. That's Tori McElhaney. You all know who this guy is. He's yeah. Richie freaking Grant. How everybody doing? <laughs> Safety yeah. for the Atlanta yeah. Falcons, Central Florida alum. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Richie, we're going to start with a pretty serious... Tori and I are, are seasoned journalists, so we're going to start with a hard-hitting question mm-hmm. right here that we want to know about your mouthpiece. Right, uh, because sometimes it's so normal. Fun. Sometimes yeah, yeah, it's yeah. normal. Sometimes it looks like a junkyard dog. <laughs> sometimes it has like a grill on it. Sometimes yeah, it has old. like oh, maybe like, van- yeah. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Give us the origin story <laughs> of oh, where the mouthpiece the origin. come from. Oh, what's this guy's name, man? Some it was a quarterback I had in a at UCF. I think his name was Cruz Chick, something like that. But he had these wristbands, like a huge bag of them. And I ain't know. I mean, not the wristbands, but the uh, the mouthpiece, the huge yeah. bag of them. I didn't know uh, like who they were from or anything like uh-huh. that. But I seen all the designs on there. I'm like, I'm finna spice it up this year. <laughs> I said, give me two of those, man. So he threw me two of them. Um, he threw me a white one and like a pink one. I never wore the pink one, but the white one uh, is one I still wear to this day. Not the same mouthpiece. Obviously. <laughs> same design. The same design. Good. Yeah, so there the we same go. design. So it's like a little. White mouthpiece with skull teeth on there. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's one that we were looking at. Yeah, that's that's my favorite one. It, it, it was this picture was zoomed up uh, on you like really close, and I was like, I would not want to run it that day. <laughs> hey, funny story about that though. My coach in college, man, my DB coach. So one day, you know, it was you know practice was going kind of bad, whatever, whatever, and uh, we watching film, we watching film at the practice, and he was like, Why are you smiling? I'm like, coach, I'm not smiling. I was I was mad like you. Like, you know, we not we not performing. He was like, I see you right there. You smiling. I was like, Coach, that's my mouthpiece, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's put your glasses here, on, like, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my mouthpiece or whatever. <laughs> but, but, yeah, that's a funny little story about that mouthpiece, though. Yeah, no, we love – because we were we, – when we were prepping for this podcast, we were like, what can we add, What can we start the podcast yeah. off with? And we both were like immediately saw those pictures, some piece. pictures, and we're like, no, those are, those are fire. The gold one is new, though. I just got that one last season because – I lost my white one. So, oh, I see. Yeah, they got me another one. But the gold one was nice, though. The yeah. gold one, it, it really handy. pops. Yeah, it came uh-huh. in handy. Looks good. Yeah. Okay, so next question. Talking about the whole swag, mm. that of which I feel like this secondary has. Yeah, we got some swag. I really think it's this group is very fun to watch. Mm. I really like watching, and, and too, like, interacting with one another. I like watching you and Hawk and D Hall, like, just hang around each other what's y'all's relationship like and and it seems crazy from the outside looking yeah i was about to say i don't know how to describe it to you you know it's just a lot of hugging a lot of dancing a lot of you know um ish talking Mm, uh, a lot of dancing who's the best dancer the best dancer dang i'm out of that competition (laughs) Uh, it, it, it it gotta be hawker Mm. Hawker D Hall, mm. they dance the most, so you know you practicing it all the time. You yeah, gotta be right. Good at it, but you you gotta be good at it. Yeah, you yeah. gotta be good at it. I don't, you know, that's not my lane. But I watch them boys do their little thing. And, but or see, I like that you said both of them. So when those guys listen to the podcast, you haven't sided with one and pissed right. off the other. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's a smart move. Right. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's let's. Go We're back gonna move on because I there's okay. I've been wanting to ask you this question for a mm. very very long time because I was actually on your. Uh, when you were drafted, mm-hmm. it was um, the night you were drafted, and it was your press conference after you were drafted. And for those that don't know, yeah, it was very emotional. Mm-hmm. But what people don't know is that, like, when you were drafted, like, COVID protocols were like pretty intense. Like, we oh, yeah. couldn't really like do a lot. But so everything was over Zoom. But it was so funny because I believe it was like one of our comms people kept coming up and saying like we're trying to get Richie, but like everybody's really excited. He has a ton of people. <laughs> and then in that press conference, I remember hearing people like in the background, what? just like being like, here you are like in the corner, just like trying to process this. And everybody is just like loud and excited. Like losing their minds. Yeah. What was that night like with your family and, and friends? Cause it seemed like it was so much fun. It was like, you know, that, um, that one video when uh, Kevin Garnett was like, we're going to Disney World. Yeah. Like, that's the excitement I had, man. Like I had like 40 people in that house with me. It's like 40 people, all family members, some friends, um, some of the ones I grew up with. But um, man, like, so I got the call. I'm on the phone call. Mm-hmm. Everybody's sh- quiet, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I'm talking to coach. I'm talking to um, T. I'm, talk- I'm just talking to everybody. Um, hang up. The moment was just like, 
Like out of body experience. You know experience. what I mean? Like yeah. I'm really here right now. Like yeah. I just got on the phone with the Falcons. <laughs> like that's real. So you know, I had to ask my brother, like the Falcons. Like, oh man, let's go. So you know, we, we you know we uh we stayed quiet until my little town came on the TV. But after they called my name on the TV, it was just a party from there. Like, it was so fun, man, and everybody just you know just showing me love and we was talking about the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I said my little prayer at the at the the TV went off. You know, I cried like a baby or whatever, but finally out of those tears, we, we partied some more. So it was a super fun night, man. I, everybody I love was around me. Um, got a bunch of calls, a bunch of text messages. So it was a really blessed night. I love that. I mean, that, that's kind of how you hope that it, it is, right? You have mm-hmm. everybody who you have proved right, right? They all thought mm. you were going to be an NFL mm-hmm. player, an NFL star, and then bang, the phone call comes. Um, that's crazy. The lone real football question in this whole thing yeah, this is, is, really it. <laughs> is, is, is this, is that you go back through the pre-draft process mm-hmm. and you, you cannot type in Richie Grant into a Google search without the Senior Bowl coming up. Yeah. You just oh, yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Ooh, and it man. was like Senior Bowl star, like the, the, like the week just sent him like a rocket ship. So it came up so much that I can't not ask you mm-hmm. about that week and what that week, I don't, I don't know what your mindset was going into it, but what came out of it was pretty awesome. So give me a, a thought about what you were going through mentally going into that thing because yeah. it turned out so well for you. Um, honestly, man, just a bunch of question marks, like yeah. in terms of what they spit um, that week, but I'm so grateful for that invite because that like, I was I was already on the way, but that changed the whole course of my draft process. Absolutely. Like that senior bowl, like I mean, yeah, my name was out there. You know, people was talking. I was getting phone calls, but that senior bowl week was like probably one of the most important weeks I had in the whole draft process. Going into it, not knowing what to expect, but talking to my teammate Aaron Robinson, uh, with the Giants, shout out to him. But talk to him, we was just like, man, like it's supposed to be the best of the best. So let's just go out here and you know and do what we do. Um, we had faith in our abilities. But the weird thing was, we were training for the combine at the time, so you know, body was like my body was sore. Yeah, like we were yeah. right in the beginning of training for the combine, so you putting all these new lifts on and all this new running conditioning. I'm like, man, I'm gonna have to go perform, you know, uh-huh. in front of all these guys and teams. You know what I'm saying? I gotta play the best of the best. Yeah, body feeling like this, whatever. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whatever. Ain't got time for that. No excuses. So showed up that week, you know, shaking everybody's hand. I'm like, okay. First night, I'm like, I'm gonna guard him, guard him, guard him. <laughs> like, you know, in my head, I'm like, okay, I see who here, all right, da da da. Yeah. And then first practice, man, I, you know, I said my prayer, and I just, I just wanted to have fun competing, and mm-hmm. I think, I, I think I did exactly that. And every single day, it, it unfolded that way. So. It, it was, was really crazy good. because it was like, the name Richie Grant before the Senior Bowl, mm-hmm. very different than the name Richie Grant after the to, Senior Bowl. And I thought I that agree. was very fascinating yeah. because not a lot of people can say like that one week really yeah, kind of changed the trajectory. Right. But for you, it kind of was it, that. It definitely gave me a little boost. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it gave me a boost and I noticed it, you know what I mean? But I try to stay humble and just keep working. Yeah. You know? One of my favorite quotes that you've ever said, um, and we talk to you quite often, mm. <laughs> but one of your favorite ones, it was when, I believe it was when we were talking to you probably early training camp last year. Mm-hmm. And you said, and I have it, I have it written okay. down. Let's hear you it. said, <laughs> I've always been a guy who bit off more than I can chew. Oh, yeah. I learned. <laughs> I knew that an, one right away. Yeah. I learned <laughs> at an early age you can't grow unless you're put in uncomfortable spots mm-hmm. to get better. I feel like that is a very specific quote. And I need to know, like, what situation <laughs> you went through that you felt like this is way more than I can chew. And oh, I've got to be uncomfortable. i got to push forward. You know what, man? I think. It's just that uh, that competitiveness in me, maybe like, um, you know, I had all these, I had all my cousins. We all lived in the same house growing up, and you know, you gonna you gonna compete. You know, playing tackle football on our knees, all sure. types of stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I always wanted. To, we playing as teams, but I always wanted to be on my own team because I knew I could yeah. depend on myself. <laughs> so I said, you know what? All y'all get on that side. I'm gonna get on this side, and I'm gonna try to score the touchdown. So I invented a whole new game. You know, so this started at, a, at an early age in terms of like uncomfortable position because I just wanted to win like right, yeah. how far can I push myself you know what I mean that's and it was so innocent back then but now it's like it's actually you know it's a purpose behind it but still though I had to learn like okay you can push yourself but it's a limit you know what I mean so 
challenge, but like I said, mm -hmm. bite off more than you can chew, it'll bite you in the butt. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I learned that from him. I mean, when you're going up against, I mean, however many sixth, seven, fifth grade cousins, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. probably. Yeah, we, got, we got down and dirty. Yeah. <laughs> we that's really what you're got supposed to, to do. It. Yeah, we did. And, and it's crazy because you, you're not the only Grant who's pretty good at football, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. You have an Uncle Terry yeah. that wasn't half bad at Jeez. the University of Alabama. Yeah, he, he got a little freshman record over there for touchdowns, yeah. <laughs> as, as a kid growing up with somebody like that, and, of course, he went to Bama, but mm -hmm. I, I think I, he was Mr. Mississippi a couple oh, of yeah. times, uh, right? Two or three. Yep. Right. So we're talking about an athlete at the sport that you want to play. Like, what Absolutely. was it like to have that? I don't know, example, role model, even when he was in high school, right. I would assume, right? right. You, were, were you out watching his, his games in high school? What? I watched his film to 3, 4, 5 in the morning every night. Like, as a kid, <laughs> all I want to do is watch his highlights. And he used to be so mad. Like, you want to watch him again? I'm like, put him in. I want to watch him again. We want to watch him again. So, uh, But he played a way bigger role than just that football part. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, my uncle was like the dad. You know what I mean? All these cousins and, and my siblings I talk about. We all in that one trailer or whatever. Mm -hmm. He was like the dad to all of us. So just I just wanted to to get to a level he did. You know, growing yeah. up, even shooting stars coming across uh coming across the sky, I'm like, please just make me like my uncle. You know what I mean? I wanna be successful. I wanna be, you know, a leader. I wanna be like a proud father figure. You know what I mean? Just yeah. a role model and and that's what he was for me. So I didn't want to disappoint him. So every summer we went up there when he was at Bama. Me, my cousin, um, lives in Mississippi, and my little brother, we went to we went to Bama, stayed with him for like two months. And we would like work out every day. Uh -huh. You know, you pushing up, we little kid, you know what I mean? Yeah, we how old were y'all? Because was, it wasn't that like, it was like 2006 to like 2009. Yeah, so I was like. You were probably like six to nine years old, right? I had to be at least like eight. Yeah. Eight, yeah, something like that. But it was it was instilled in me so early, because I'm like, man, this dude is so successful. Mm -hmm. And like, everybody love him, you know what I mean? He gets so much respect. I'm like, what is he doing? So he he just a respectful guy and he worked hard. I'm like I can do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, can, I can do what he doing. So <laughs> that's that's where it started in those building blocks. You know, it just created who I am today. I love that because one of the things that when we were researching for this podcast, I came across a, co a quote that said, you know, you were talking about Terry and you were mm -hmm. like, he's someone who kept me out of trouble and he's I, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you were like he's the highest character man that I had to look yeah, up to. Absolutely. I mean, that's I think something. that's absolutely. that's such a compliment to someone to hear that. I mean, what does he mean to you even like even now? Now, now, at, that, now like, that you're I mean, in the NFL and you're shoot. playing. So back then, you know, being a kid, um I moved out of Mississippi as a kid, moved to Florida, mm -hmm. but we went to Mississippi every single weekend and most most of the most of the time it was to go watch him on Friday night. Mm. So at the school we getting on the road, you know, me and yeah. my grandma we getting on the road to go watch him play or whatever. But um, seeing him, hold on, say that question one more time. Yeah, no, just like when you were talking about like him saying like you were, you said about him like yeah. the highest character man you yeah. had mm -hmm. to look up. So that's why I was going. So seeing him like at that early age, you know, when you're in a room with like let's say Michael Jackson or somebody walked in here. Mm -hmm. you're like, that's Michael. Like, I can't believe I'm in the presence of Michael. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you want to faint all <laughs> So that's how I felt my uncle. Like, like that's my uncle? Like, really? Like, I get to claim him? Stuff Aww. like that. But, it, it, you know, as I got older, it turned to more like, what's up, uncle? Like, how you doing, mm. man? But he still plays that father role, you know, that father figure. And I lean on him so much, you know, for advice because he been down his road, you mm -hmm. know, football and, and just being uh, – um, Somebody that everybody looks up to, right. you know, a uh, role model. And he'd been in this role so so long, and he was the first one to do it with no help. So I'm like, man, like, you're so strong, and where you getting all that from? So now I'm just picking his brain, and I've been doing that for years. And right. it's been helping me, obviously. Yeah. You know, I got to a good mm -hmm. point in my life. Uh, obviously, I want to go further, but now it kind of – the roles kind of reversed. So he didn't get to go to the NFL. Right. Mm -hmm. He played in the CFL for two mm -hmm. years. Right. So now he's watching my journey. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's he's he's seeing all these things. He's asking me questions and he wanna be involved in every part. And I'm like, man, like look how life works. You know what I mean? Like, it's like full circle. Yeah, it's full it really circle. Is. He yeah. brought me here and now I get to bring him along. Oh. You know what I mean? So it, it, I love it. Though. I love so it. So like when you when you went to see him at, when he was at Bama, mm -hmm. do you have any stories from like when like anybody you met while you were there, I mean, yeah, I feel because those teams because were, those what? teams were loaded. Nick yeah, Saban had so many first rounders, so many man, all the first used rounders. Man, those locker room, <laughs> you know, I can't tell all the stories. But, <laughs> uh, we used to be in the locker room, man. I done met Kareem Jackson, 
Julio Jones. I met Julio when he was a freshman. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, he was teaching me and my little brother how to play the uh, – it was the 40-yard dash on the PlayStation. Oh, yeah, that's, that's oh, way yeah. back then. But yeah, <laughs> he was teaching us how to do that. I met Julio, Mark, um, Terrence Cody. I don't even know if you remember Terrence Cody, big dude. Yeah, uh, huge. Just say I done met everybody from, uh -huh. from 2006 to 2010. I done met you everybody. Met them all. Yeah, That's fantastic. Uh, I don't know if they remember me, but I remember them. I'm sure if you ever come across them on the other side of the line of scrimmage, yeah, you'll be like, hey, I Did saw Julio you. remember Wait. you? I don't know if, see, see right before I got here, you know, yeah. that Oh, happened, yeah, that's but, right. Yeah. That's right. Never a chance to meet him. But, yeah. Oh, man. Um, but in Tampa, maybe you can say, I mean, hey, man, talk to the 40-yard dash. You know, you know, you know, between the line, you know, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah right. after the game, you know, we'll talk. But between the line, it probably ain't going to be too much talking, you know. Yeah. That's but how the game go. so as we're kind of wrapping this thing up, I, mm -hmm. I got to ask you about something that's not on your wrist right now. Okay. And that's because there was a press conference last year uh -huh. where you told us a cool story about you. You wore two wristbands for like, I don't know. Ever. Since like your sophomore year in college, right? right? Yeah. If I got it right, it was, Probably. it was above the line. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's more. And always compete. Always compete. Always compete. There Woo! we go. And got you had right. a third one that you gave to I your gave. sister. Yep. I gave yeah. I remember that yep. too. Yeah. Yeah, so he finally took him off. That, finally I, took him off. After all those years. Like five months ago. <laughs> finally took him off, man. It took but, me a long time. Though. But, like, were they nice reminders, mm -hmm. from, like, while they were there? Just, you know, because in, in college they were kind of slogans of, right. of yours, right? Yeah, so um, Coach Shannon, man, love Coach Shannon. Uh, he coached, coached me at UCF for two years. Um, him and his staff, they just had this idea, you know, like let's reward guys for doing what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. like, um, or going the extra, you know, going above. And it kind of kept people in line. You know, we young, we, we want a reward system, you know what I mean? So uh, it started with t-shirts and it was with the GPA. So mm -hmm. your GPA had to be above a certain thing, or if you had the highest GPA in your position group, you'd mm -hmm. get rewarded. And then it went to on the field. So now it's um, finishing the play, you know, mm -hmm. not loafing or, or, uh, making it to class on time. You know, you don't have any late or uh, unexcused absences. Stuff, it's all those types of things. And and then uh, the second year, he came out with some some cool, I'm like, a bud line, always compete. I'm like, you know what? I used to write little stuff in my wristband and peewee. Yeah. Know, that just helped me remember, okay, go hard, don't walk. You know what I mean? Just stuff like that, all type of stuff. So so a bud line, always compete. I'm like, that's that's what you need to do uh, yeah. in football. You know, you know being a butter line, for mm -hmm. people who don't understand, being a butter line just means like, um, if the whole team is finishing a drill and then you got like two guys who loafing in the back or they don't finish through the line. Right. Okay, everybody's a butter line, but those two guys are not. Uh -huh. We trying to get everybody on this side of the line. That you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. If everybody's on this side of the line, then we going the right way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we can trust everybody to do what they supposed to do. And that, you know, those wristbands were a simple reminder of that. You know what I mean? It was just, I guess the leader in me, like, hey, yeah. Chuck Norris, man, hey, y'all, y'all get right now, accountability, yeah. you know what I mean? It's so, like checking yourself. Yeah, it yeah. was just keeping me yeah. accountable too. There so that go. was a good little reminder. So All to right. wrap up yeah. the podcast, unfortunately, we have to wrap up. It's I don't even want to wrap so, it up. I know we don't even <laughs> yeah. want to wrap. We can keep going for like yeah. another hour. Um, but so we, at the end of every episode, mm. we play a game. Oh. It's like a rapid fire type of game. Um, we do. We ask the same questions. For everybody, however, we have one question in here that's just specifically for you. Okay. Because <laughs> we heard that you're really big into karaoke. Oh man, don't do that to me. We're, we're not no, gonna no, make you sing. We're not gonna make you sing. You we're don't have to sing. Don't worry, we would never do that. But <laughs> well, we might. We but, might, but, but not this time. Not, not right now. Maybe we want yeah. you to come back. Yeah. yeah. Don't do it to me. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 I've been yelling calls all. <laughs> week. No. 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 You're good. So. Just so you know, okay. there is a question about karaoke. Okay. Right. But the first question is a simple one. What is your favorite play ever in your career? Ooh, man. I feel like sometimes that's really hard because there are so many yeah. plays. So like we go as a Falcon, as a Knight. It's up to you. Yeah. All right. What, what let, me, let me go ahead and then be specific. Okay. okay? okay. <clears throat> as a Knight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my very first turnover in college, um, it was kind of to, to seal the game. You know, mm -hmm. we was playing our rival USF. They were driving down. I got a forced fumble. That was my very first turnover. I had went an entire year on re like being a red shirt. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm making plays in practice. I'm like, this is college. Like, how am I going to play in the game? And I got that turnover. I was like, I can do this. Oh, right. Yeah, we can that do it. Sense. I can I love do it. That. What was the last movie that you saw? Even if it's embarrassing, you still got to say it. Nah, I'll be truthful. <laughs> the last movie I watched, I think it was Gray Man. Mm. Yeah, I think it was Gray Man, uh, that new movie that came out. I just wanted to was check it, it out. I like it. Was it good? It was pretty good. Pretty good. 
I like right. action. I like thriller. So yeah. yeah. Right up there. I'm really big into the MCU, like Marvel movies. I'm with you on stuff. MCU, man. Oh, love it. Um, this is the this is the question. What is your go to karaoke song? The one that you could get up and do oh, uh, without thinking. Mario, let me love you. Oh, oh, yes. Hey, that, hey, that's a classic, dog. Yes. That's a classic. That's a classic. Oh my God. I actually did that one time at a karaoke night. That was my first time. I was in front of all these strangers. I'm like, I'm not going up there, bro. I'm not going up there. And then my homie, they was like, man, just go up there, man. You know, you only live once. I'm like, I don't go up there, man. <laughs> I went up there. I killed that joint. <laughs> like, I'm finna start doing this every weekend. Honestly, brought the house down. Man, I killed that. It was like a new talent. Like, <laughs> is that yeah. what you sang for? We so the thing is, it's like that rookies have to when they come in. Oh, the rookie show. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you sang for them? Nah, I swing. I sang a uh, um, uh, sweet thing by uh, I think Shaka Khan. Okay. All right. Wow. Yeah. I'm an old soul. I, I was oh, gonna man. say that was before you were yeah, born. I'm I think. Old soul, man. <laughs> we used to turn the gyms on every Sunday and clean up the house. Man. I'm an old. Hey, soul. that that's like a thing. You woke up in the morning, you heard your mom like turn. <laughs> I knew turn. what time it was. Oh, huh? Yeah. No. It's time to clean up. Uh, <laughs> who, which Falcon do you spend the most time with? Mm, the most time? I don't know, man. Uh, at this point, it might be E. Harris. You know, since e. since we've been in, yeah, since we've been back in the building, uh, might be E. Harris. Uh, I'm with my boy Mike a lot. Mike Ford. D. Hall, mm -hmm. you know what? I can't even tell you, man. <laughs> God, I start going naming everybody. You know what I mean? I the whole everybody. list of the secondary. TQ, yeah. yeah. Um, last one. What is your biggest pet peeve? Ooh, biggest pet peeve. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, you know, I'm a, I'm a chill guy, you know, <laughs> and I don't, I don't like to let other people affect my mood, but. That was a but. that was a very strong, it very was. strong. It was, it was, I do was. got a couple. <laughs> mm, I got a couple now. This is the one that I feel like everybody always kind of like has to really think about. Right. You know what? I don't like selfish drivers. So like, selfish okay. drivers. When I'm in traffic, yeah. The people who cause the backup in traffic, mm -hmm. like cutting people off. You know what I mean? Or Yo, it's the so speed unnecessary. limit 65. You're going Yo, for, like, you know what I mean? Ricky, I just be like, is, I'm not think about the you. next person. Like, no, just I, I got to get to work. In. You know what I mean? I got to get to work. I'm about to get to I love that you brought this up because literally today we were talking about it. <laughs> and I was talking Roll about rage. Oh, I was so mad because when you get in the left lane, you should not be going 60 miles an hour. Why? In the, That's the passing lane. lane. That uh -huh. is the, the passing pass lane. lane. So the fact that you said this, I feel validated yeah. in my anger. Yeah. So thank, nah, thank nah, we, we to get on that. Yeah, we, yeah. we to get it's on good. that. Thank God. And we've bonded on episode three of Falcons <laughs> of Focus. Yeah. Richie Grant, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. That Appreciate was applause worthy. Appreciate y'all. going around town. <laughs> Rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We're going to come back to you. I don't know if you're going to be able to top Richie. That's going to be tough. I know. Uh, Falcons teammates, you're on notice. That was a good one. <laughs> hey, y'all boys tighten up, huh? You know I come with it. <laughs>